Hey everyone, Dory Woodman. So this week we are going to be getting rid of this LPG boiler and replacing it with a Mitsubishi Air Source heat pump. So what we have here in place at the moment is an unvented hot water cylinder. This is going to be taken out and put in with a Mitsubishi pre plumb cylinder, which will be obviously linked to the SOS heat pump. We've also got unfloor heating. We've got unfloor heating on the ground floor and on the first floor. So we will be rearranging some of the pipe work that's in this cupboard to facilitate for the new system. Right, so as discussed before, this property here used to have an LPG boiler. We've removed the boiler into this, what we call in a retrofit, although this property is only around about three to four years old. So it's very well insulated, already has underfloor heating throughout, um, which again is a great kind of marriage and partnership with an air source heat pump as we are providing a much lower flow temperature. And we only need to provide up to around about 45 degrees for this system. So aside from your heat pump, obviously going in place of the existing heat and appliance, we also need to consider your electrical supply. Have you got sufficient um, space on your board, for instance? Have you got a single three phase? And um, you know, we just need to make sure that you've got enough supply here to be able to power this unit. Most households do, um, but you may have a board that has got, you know, it's completely full up. So then you might have to consider that the electrician may need to put in a sub board, something extra, essentially, just to provide the power to the heat pump itself. And generally speaking, we will have a heat pump designated fuse that has to be done with a rotary isolator switch outside um, so that you've got uh, basically a way of isolating that heat pump completely um, if you need to do carry out any works inside the unit you can safely do that by switching this off completely and that will turn off the power to that unit as well as the supply for the heat pump itself you'll need a supply for what will be the immersion heater and dependent on the heat pump and the manufacturer you may also just need another supply to power your interface and all of your heating control. Um, so we also have um, an electrical meter, uh, phase meter, which basically will uh, is there for purposes to show the heat pump's performance and how many kilowatt hours the heat pump is using. That way, when you look at your utility bill, your electricity bill comes through, you can actually get a good idea of how much of the electricity is being spent on the heat pump because you can see exactly how many kilowatt hours are being used at any one time. And as well as, you know, if you've got underfill heating system, for instance, you know, you may need a, another supply for uh, your wiring center for the manifold that will control of your underfill heating controls. Um, and then on this one, <clears throat> we've got a secondary uh, return which is linked to the hot water so it does a secondary return coming back and then there's just another isolation there for control but your installer your mcs installer will be able to tell you exactly what your electrical requirements will be but it's just something that would need to be considered now for us here we're quite fortunate that this consumer unit is by a wall at the, at the, of, of an outside wall and very close proximity to where the heat pump is located <clears throat> A lot of households um, will have their consumer unit, say under the stairs in the middle of the house, for example. So again, just needs to be considered, you know, how far does electricity have to run? You know, is it easily, um, can you easily route, say, armor cable, for instance, to power a rotary isolator 
So just other things, just food for thought when you're kind of looking at and assessing, you know, how and where you're going to incorporate a heat pump into your property. Okay, so one of the important jobs that we have to do um, also is linking up the existing heating controls for the property. And we've got underfloor heating systems on three levels. And so what we're doing is we've gone into the wiring centre. We're going to be um, obviously figuring out what goes where. It's very busy in there. Link up what we've got going on in each wiring centre and taking that back to the heat pump control or signals wires so that the heat pump knows when to come on and when to turn off for heating demand. And as you can see, this system down here is all kind of fired up, it's ready to go. Uh, we've just been balancing it today just to make sure all of the flow rates are correct, that we'll get you know sufficient heat throughout the whole system. And then aside from you know insulating all of this pipe work, this is the cylinder which has been put in place in this kind of plant room and um, we've got a 250 litre cylinder that sits beside and works with the Mitsubishi Ekadam air source heat pump which is currently in operation at the moment as you can see it's just here this is an 11.2 and we are currently got the heating on at the moment you can see this fan is on um, again it's very quiet system so it's not one of the well it is the ultra quiet system that Ekadan provide with the R32 refrigerant which helps you know increases the efficiency of this system with the R32 refrigerant as opposed to the older R410A and there we have it lovely property out in the stick so they're off gas so there's no gas here at all aside from this LPG tank which of course, now that we've disconnected the boiler, this will end up um, using up whatever they want to use for their um, oven, where they've got a, a gas hob, so they'll use up the rest of that LPG. Once that's done, that will be completely gone and we will be green, sustainable, and obviously relying on renewable technology that will provide 100% of the heating and hot water for this property.